Eric Mwabith, part four of this mentorship video on this series. And we're taking a look here at the monthly charts. And previously we had looked at the 13 week and the 34 week moving averages. And now we're gonna be considering the same type of crossovers on the monthly, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. Now keep in mind, we are using Fibonacci numbers that go something like this. Two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, and 55, 89, and so on and so on, 89. So on this moving averages, we're gonna be taking a look at the monthly. You can see here we have 13, we have eight, and we have 21. So on the monthly, I can use either, or you can use either, which is either the 18 crossing over the 21 month moving average. So you can either use eight crossing above or below the 21 month moving average, or you can use 13 crossing below or above the 21 month moving average. Either of them is fine. So that's the key. So you can either use eight or you can also use 13. Let's take a look at crude oil here by way of the USO. You can see that there was a crossover here, which was bearish. And let's call it between the 13 and the 21 month moving average. And since this crossover, we've seen this big drop, which was the same drop in crude oil. In fact, Let's take a look at a chart for crude oil itself. And we can see that this is exactly the same type chart. Crossover, bearish crossover between the 13-month 13, 13 moving average, undercutting the 21-month moving average, and you see this drop. So this is the key to finding which direction you should be trading an instrument. Now, if we go back, because this is three years worth of data, Let's take a look at seven years just so we can get a longer picture. All right, we can see that there was a crossover here, which was bullish sometime in 2010. Had a nice run in the market and there was no really big crossover. There was one here that was crossing over bearish, crossing over bullish, almost crossover bearish, and then a crossover bullish here. So this was a little bit choppy which explains why the market was choppy because you'd get a crossover one way, crossover the other way. So bullish to bearish crossovers, hence this confusion, this period. And finally, we get this bearish crossover here and that crossover led to this big drop. So we know we can use the crossover to give us at least an idea of where the market is pos positioning itself to go. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ as we run through some ideas here some stocks and markets the nasdaq you can see crossover between the 13 week moving average 13 month moving average crossing above the 21 month moving average or also eight month moving average crossing above the 21 month moving average and as you can see this is exactly sometime here in 2010 as you can see here, the crossover was bullish sometime late 2009, and since then the market has been on a strong move, and we haven't seen a bearish crossover. The last bearish crossover was sometime early on in 2008 before the crash. So we know that using that moving average crossover can put us in the best light in terms of market direction. Let's take a look at another. Let's take a look at the one we were and took a look at and considered in part three, which is win results. You see here crossover for a nice move in 2010. There's another almost crossover that failed. So it maintained its crossover and had another move higher. And then we get this bearish crossover with a drop from about 180 all the way to about 100 and now back below $100. So that should have kept you in the right trade. At least you should have known that this stock was looking bearish over the last couple of months. Let's take a look at another world, another stock or another world market index. 
Whoops. And now we are taking a look at the Chinese market. A couple of crossovers, crossover here in 08, when world markets were crashing for a drop. And then there's another crossover attempt here, which was slightly successful. It was followed by a bearish crossover here for a move down, and another bearish crossover for a move down. And recently, there was actually a bullish crossover for a move higher. So this has been keeping traders on the right side of the market using the, cross the most recent crossover. And we can see right now, we haven't seen a bearish crossover. So one has to be looking for reasons to be long the Chinese market. Let's take a look at Australia here, which we looked in part three. And we see that there was a, some couple of crossovers. Most recent crossover here was bullish for a nice swing trade to the upside. There was previously a bearish move here in 2011 for multi-month move lower. And the other crossover that we see here was bullish and this took the market higher. So that kept in the right trade. Right now we haven't seen a bearish crossover. One has to assume that the market there is strong. There's no reason to short that market. If we take a look also at, let's take a look at the SQQQ, which we've been watching just in, in, ter in terms of giving us direction and we can see we've never seen a bearish crossover, but we've also never seen a bullish crossover. So there's no reason here to go along this instrument since we've never seen any buy signal based on the crossover between the 13 month moving average moving above the 21 month moving average. So we haven't seen any crossover. There's no reason to buy this, hoping and expecting a move to the upside. Let's take a look at the other stocks we've been watching and tracking along in this series. You can see Lockheed Martin, most recent crossover was bullish and that was at the price range of about $60 in late 2011. Since then, we've seen a sharp move higher. No bearish crossover yet. That market continues Oh, that stock needs to, continues to look good. Let's take a look at ABC. And we can see that going back to this crossover here in early 2000, mid 2009, price range there of about $20. Instrument has gone on to trade as high as 120. And we've never seen a bearish crossovers between the monthly moving averages. Let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at Nifty, and we can see the Indian market here showing a crossover early mid to, to mid 2009 for a nice move higher. There was a bearish crossover here for multiple month lower, and then a bull, bullish crossover here for a nice move since mid 2012, and the market continues to look good. Let's take a look at one more stock, which has been one of the best performing stocks in the U.S. market going back to 2009, and it is MNST, Monster Beverage. You see the most recent crossover on the monthly was sometime here, late 2009. Price range of about $20. Since then, it's gone on to trade as high as $140. We haven't seen a bearish crossover yet, so there's no need to really find it. A, a short point or a sell signal point, you have to be looking for now for reasons to own the stock on a rebound or on a breakout move. So it continues to look strong. It's a very simple strategy. You're either looking for eight, eight month moving average, moving above or below the 21 month moving average, or you can also use the 13 month moving average, moving below or above the 21 month moving average. Eric Mwade, good luck, peace, and blessings. Woo!